Minister, I want to draw your attention to a report compiled by the Human Sciences Research Council on FETs, which found that enrollment rates had remained flat over the period between 2007 and 2010, despite funding for, for, for the recapitalization program. Um, the FET colleges are obviously in need of serious, um, you know, refurbishing at, at a number of levels. Take us through how your plan, um, you know, is planning to ramp up the capacity um, and the quality of the education that students receive at FET colleges. If you ask me what's my number one priority, is turning FET colleges into colleges of choice. Being quality colleges and producing enough numbers of students we need for purposes of addressing our skills shortages. We have already embarked on enormous changes. Firstly, we found that most of our 50 FET colleges did not have qualified chief financial officers, just something basic. We've sorted that out now. So every FET college has now a financial officer. Now has a qualified officer. In fact, by end of August, let me put it that way, by end of August, already we've done now four provinces. They have qualified and we've been working with the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants to provide for that. Secondly, we've got what we call work streams, which are teams drawing in business, academics, and other experts to focus on a few areas, finance and governance in the colleges, curriculum, program mix and offerings and relationships with industry and communities. Because a good FET college must not only provide good programs, but must also have closer relationship with the communities so that they are able to respond to skills needs in their communities or regions, as well as relationship with employers. That is why, as part of this intervention, what we have done now is to create an environment for bringing together your FET colleges, your employers, and your CETAs. Because the three are very critical. Obviously with the role of the trade union movement, because the trade union movement also has got to, to actually play a role in so far as that is concerned. So those are some of the measures. But in addition to that, one of the things that I'm proud of, which we have done from 2010, is that all poor students who qualify for our loan and bursary scheme, uh, as from 2010, those who go to FET colleges, if they are following occupational programs, like for artisans and so on, their education is free now from 2010. And we have more than quadrupled the amount of bursaries that we are giving to FET college students. And that has led to quite some significant growth now. Minister, now that solves um, in part the question of access, which is yes. important. But we can't just stay with access. We have to also move to quality. Yes. Talk to us about the quality of education, because there has been concern that the quality of the education at the FETs is not what it should be and doesn't necessarily give uh, employers confidence that someone coming out of an FET college with a piece of paper is able to do the job that he or she is supposed to do in the workplace. That's what I spoke about partly earlier, but let me just quickly say what are the key interventions. As I have said, We've got dedicated teams that are working with colleges on improving finance and governance, the appointment of CFOs, looking at program qualifications and mix. In addition, in the National Skills Accord, we've reached an understanding with employers that they must open their workplaces not only for students, but for college lecturers as well. So that a college lecturer is, is teaching something that is relevant to industry now and not teaching something which was relevant 10 years ago. Because if you do that, we are actually creating unemployable students. There's another measure of quality which is very, very important, that we are not only exposing students, but we are also exposing college lecturers. Another qu measure on quality is that we are designing, we are already, as from this year, experimenting with this a new qualification for FET college lecturers. Because some of them were just high school teachers who just apply and they get taken. There's a vast difference between a high school 
and an FET college. So we are designing a dedicated FET college lecturer training program as well as ongoing professional development of FET college lecturers. In addition to that, we have just announced some few weeks back 2.5 billion rands to intervene on quality equipment mm -hmm. that must buy equipment that must also ensure that we are able to promote these relationships I'm talking about. For instance, we'd like to have exchange programs with industry that some engineers must now and again go and teach in an FET college, as well as what we have agreed upon in the National Skills Accord is a doctor college by employers. So those are measures that are aimed at improving quality. And we are aware that quality is a multifaceted issue. It's not just money. Yes, it is money. It's more than money. But it's about the quality of the lecturers. It's about exposure of the students to the, to the workplace, as well as partnerships, as I have said, between the CETAs, trade union movement, employers, and the colleges. Now, obviously, one of the institutions that's critical to upscaling the quality of, of training for lecturers would be your universities, for example. Uh, Minister, talk to us. Are there any partnerships between universities, for example, and FET colleges that look specifically at how those institutions can actually impart knowledge and skills and ramp up you know, the, 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 the quality of the educators at, um, at your FET colleges? Absolutely. I should have mentioned that. That's another key partner. It's university. So when I'm talking about dedicated FET college lecturer training, for instance, that's where universities are important. We are indeed working with universities, especially your former technicons, universities of technology, because there is a natural closeness between those and the FET colleges as opposed to your more traditional mm -hmm. universities. So already, these experiments we are talking about on teacher education is with some of the universities of technology. For instance, we are in discussions and looking at this with the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, the Deben University of Technology, we want to move into that, as well as what we call comprehensive universities that combine both your technical type programs and your traditional, like mm -hmm. University of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm for example. So that partnership also is very, very important between FET colleges and universities. But also universities now will be resourcing. We are already resourcing some of them to do ongoing research on the FET college sector as well as our skills development system because you can't build a system unless we are able to generate knowledge about it mm -hmm. and also be able to research the program. Yeah. Now, Minister, of course, um, part of the new growth path is to locate South Africa's economic growth within its proper regional and continental um, you know, spaces. And of course, any attempt to locate skills development has to take into the co consideration that we are on the African continent. Talk to us about how your skills plan and your overall thrust in terms of education um, looks at the fact that we are in a Southern African and African context. What are the linkages that you hope to forge with institutions on the continent? continent to engender closer cooperation. Absolutely central, Karima. And I'm very pleased that what we have done, because we have realized that South Africa cannot be able to grow and develop as an island unless linked to the region. In June this year, I convened a meeting of all your higher education and training ministers in the region, talking about cooperation, exchange in research, cooperation amongst our universities, but also skills development. That is the first thing that I have done. And out of that, we have agreed uh, some of the priority areas for cooperation in the region. And part of that cooperation is also to support a number of initiatives, for instance, by SADC. Regional integration, the necessity for regional industrial strategy, which must include, by the way, beneficiation so that as regional economies, we are not just exporting raw minerals, but we are able to beneficiate them here. It's very important that our regional education departments are actually able to, to support that. 
over and above that I was in Harare two weeks ago. And uh, we agreed, for instance, with the Minister of Higher Education there that we need to create in the region some kind of a regional think tank on education. What are the challenges that are facing that are the peculiar to SADC. that are peculiar to SADC, mm -hmm. you know, that we need to discuss and what kind of knowledge base or capacity do we need to build? For example, there is this potentially huge regional project, the Inga project, water from the DRC, which can actually electrify every household in the entire SADC region. That's a project that the region has agreed that needs to be taken up. And we are saying from an education and training point of view, what would that require? And what kind of cooperation would require? We would need, for instance, to escalate the production of water engineers and a whole range of other skills that we, we actually need. That's one thing that really excites me. It's the prospects for deepening cooperation in the region around higher education and training.